Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be doing another album review. I'm going to today be taking a look at this record here, Neil Young's uh, classic album Harvest. So this was a review that was requested by a user, Daniel Borden. So thank you very much for requesting this. Now before I do get started with the review, I just want to say that I'm not a massive, massive like Neil Young fan. So like if I maybe get like a few facts wrong like in like, this video, like or like if it, all like if it maybe seemed all like if it maybe seems like I don't really know like what I'm talking about. Like Neil Young, like isn't like one well, like off like my absolute like favorite artist like yet. Like so, like I might get like a few things wrong like in like this video, but like it is one what was requested, and like since like, I can like own the record, I thought that it was an album like worth like talking about. So yeah, this was Young's fourth studio album, released on the first of February in 1972. It was released after Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young split up like sometime like in 1970. Like um, like Young employed a group of like country sessions guys like for like this album like he christened them like the stray gators like was like the name like of what was like the name like of like his backing band like on this album now i read online as well that a lot of like the acoustic nature like of this album like came from the fact that like around this time like neil young like had like a quite substantial back injury like meaning like he was unable to stand up and like play like his like, usual like electric guitar like instead like he was drawn to more so like sitting down like with like his like acoustic now, upon release at the time, it wasn't overwhelmingly praised, this album. Rolling Stone magazine said that it was mostly rehashes of material like from his last album after the gold rush. However, in the years since, it has got very much like a big like critical like, reappraisal. Like in a um, 1998 Q magazine poll, it, it was voted the 64th best album like of all time. Like, so it is a very highly considered album. And at the time, it was a real big commercial smash hit for like Young. Um, like it reached number one like on like the American charts becoming the best selling album of um, becoming the best selling album of 1972 there also spawned a number one um, hit single like with the song Heart of Gold like in the UK like it also done like quite well and um, considering that like, this was at like, the time like when sort of glam rock and like um, and like prog like sort of like ruled the way and um, this also um, reached number one like in that like, UK and like was certified three times platinum so all around a very very successful album here so I watched I'll show you my vinyl copy of it now i did buy this one when i was in like america like a couple like of months ago i got it from a store called uh, breakaway records here and this was a lovely find and um, this is an uh, this is a original like american press in, in absolutely pristine condition like very really clean front there there's the back of it there like just with young and like the rest of gothic is banned there and the inside looks like this, just got a nice gatefold with all the track listings, as well as sort of like, um, like who plays like on like each song, like any guest stars, and the sort of picture there. And then this also has the, you, you get the original like inner sleeve, just like a sort of plain, um, like plain design, and it's on the pre's records. And then with this copy, you also get a nice insert, so it just says Harvest Neil Young, and then all like these lyrics is all like handwritten and style like lyrics sort of fold out. So yeah, this is a really, really lovely copy like of a um, really great album. So I'm now doing the usual thing, going over each of the album's songs and I will score each track out of 10 and then those scores will be used to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. So it starts off with a brilliant song called Out on the Weekend, which is a, just a great, really sort of chilled out start to the album. You've got some really nice sort of tasteful like harmonica playing, as well as like some lovely like slide guitar parts. It all just like, it just really works. It just really like all like sort of like comes together like this song, like the music, like as well as, as well as like Young's like lyrics, like this song kind of like about sort of like coming of age, like sort of like falling in love, like that, like that sort of thing. And um, also just we sound I know, um, like one of my favourite artists, like Paul Weller, does a fantastic cover, like of this song, like I believe it's on the deluxe edition to Stanley Road. So yeah, like do like check out like Paul Weller's version. But, but for me, like I would say, like Young's original, like is still the best version, like of this track. It's just wonderful. And then the laid back vibe is kind of continued into the next track, the title track, Harvest, which is just a really sort of like nice, very sort of like summery, like sort of like style song here. He's just got some great, like sort of like songwriting on it. His vocal, um, like I mean, like when like, you first sort of like hear like sort of like New Young's voice, you think it's maybe a bit jarring, like it maybe like doesn't, it's maybe not like the most pleasant voice to listen to. But I think like on this song, he sounds great singing it. Like it's just a nice, very, 
very sort of like easy voice, very sort of comforting voice I like to listen to. Like again, I can't really say anything bad about this track, so it would have to be another 10 out of 10 for me. And the next number up is called A Man Needs a Maid, which this one begins as a kind of um, quiet sort of like piano piece. Um, like where like as that like, song like um sort of like goes along, we get like um a contribution from the London Symphony Symphony Orchestra, which gives the song a kind of more sort of menacing, like slightly like slightly darker edge. Lyrically, like um on the face of it, like at the time, this was kind of um considered a sort of um sort of sexist, like sort of song like a bit sort of like chauvinistic. Like whether like so sort of, like uh however like upon sort of like closer reading like off like the lyrics, like it is like about like Young's like vulnerabilities as sort of like when entering into like a like relationship. Like I like it's not so sort of, like sexist like as like it's like sort of like title like would suggest. I just think it's a really nice song. I mean not I mean for me personally not as strong like as the first two, but a very good track though like nonetheless would we'll give it a eight out of ten. And then we get the classic single from the album, Heart of Gold, which is just a brilliant, brilliant song. You've just got some great quality, like, musicianship, like, audio, great, great lyrics, like, about trying, like, to find, like, a trusting lover. And, um, like I said, there's a huge hit, like, for, like, Neil Young, like, hit number one, like, in, like, America, number ten, like, in, like, the UK. So this was very much, like, I think, like, his only sort of, like, real big, like, sort of chart and, like, hit single. And, um, like, because after this, like, he really, like, sort of, like, shied away, like, sort of, like, from, like, the pop stardom. Um, like also notably also notably with this track it features vocal contributions from Linda Wonstad and James Taylor. So yeah, a wonderful song there. Couldn't give it any less than a ten out of ten. And then we get a slightly more upbeat track to finish size one, which is called Are You Ready for the Country? Which is a more sort of like as an upbeat piano based track here, like just like a real toe tapper like off a song. Lyrically, it is a bit more abstract, this, like, kind of, like, the sort of, like, country, like, what he's referring to, like, isn't, like, really, like, known. Like, it could be, like, America, but, like, also, like, I've read that it could be, like, young, like, sort of, like, asking, like, his fans, like, oh, are you ready, like, for, like, this new sort of country direction, like, which, like, I'm going in. Um, I'm not too sure, I'm not too sure, like, which, like, interpretation, like, it is, like, or, like, whether, like, it is, like, supposed to just be, like, ambiguous, but no matter, it is a wonderful song, like, just musically, just a real, like, sort of, like, fun song fun song to like sort of like sing along to so yeah we'll get a 9 out of 10 from me and then opening up to side two we get another one of the singles which is a song called old man which is another kind of sort of like sort of folky sort of bluegrass like style song and this one features a prominent banjo part like i believe like played by james taylor but also has like some like heavenly like harmony vocals like especially like on like the chorus like again like linda ronstadt like and, and like james taylor like help out like with this track and lyrically, Younger said that it was inspired by the caretaker, like, off, like, his, like, farm ranch, like, which he bought, like, a few years earlier. Like, it's a song sort of, like, comparing, like, an old man's life to, like, a young man's. And, like, I just think it is a really, really fine track. Um, it um, was also, like I said, a single, reached number 31, like, on, like, the US charts. So, yes, a uh, really, um, another really good track there. We'll give it a 9 out of 10, though. And the next number up is called There's a World, which I'm going to give an 8 out of 10 to. Now, I um, really, really like this song. I think it's quite, like, an underrated chat because a lot of, like, online reviews, like, what I read, like, of this album, like, usually, like, quite dismissive, like, of this song. I mean, it's quite different, like, for this record. This is another one which... This is another one which prominently features the London Symphony Orchestra. So it has this very sort of grand, like, majestic sound, which, I mean, people have said does sound, like, out of place, like, on this album, but I think it works. I, th I think it just gives this album like a lot like of like variety like which like a lot of like of other sort of like country rock folk records that like, seem to lack I like the kind of contrasting sections like between that like, the sort of like the there's a world sort of chorus like as well like as like sort of like the softer like verse like the sort of like look around it like have you found it part where it just goes like sort of like where just because like a lot quieter like I think that like, that's quite a beautiful part like of the song I mean it's just a really well constructed check reminds me quite a bit like off like the moody blues album like days of future past like this check here so yeah like overall really 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 good track there for me Alabama. 
the next number up is probably one of the only sort of like real like sort of like rockers like on the album but it's called Alabama and I absolutely love it it's a really strong cut like on here features more like heavy like guitar work as well as vocal contributions from David Crosby and Stephen Stills like which gives the song well especially that like, the chorus like a really sort of like euphoric like feeling to it lyrically it talks about like as like the title like would suggest like the state like of like Alabama and like and like sort of like the history like of like prejudice like what like sort of like went on like in like the state just a really great like sort of like rocking shack I mean it maybe goes on a little bit too long it doesn't it doesn't have like the times here like I think it's about sort of like about five minutes this track here but um I mean the musicianship like is great like so it isn't one it isn't one like which I get bored like listening to like I would give it like a nine out of ten there for Alabama I hit the city and I lost my band and then the penultimate track is called The Needle and the Damage Done, which is a kind of song written about um about like sort of like musicians like who died like off like heroin, like overdose. Like it's quite like a touching track which features some absolutely brilliant like acoustic guitar playing. Like this is I believe this song was recorded live like as well because like at the end of it like we get like this sort of, like audience like applause. Um and like and 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 like yeah, like Young's just like playing it solo, he just puts on a really like so like very beautiful very sort of touching vocal like so like a tribute like so like i think like some like off like his close friend friends like died like off like heroin like overdose so this is just like a tribute like to them and i must say like i'm glad that, like he did stick with like this live recording because i don't think like so like a studio production like would have really captured that like, the beauty like of like the song so yeah i will give it like an 8 out of 10 there i mean it is a little bit short a little bit sort of simple but a uh, very good song though like nonetheless and then the final track on the album is a song called Words Between the Lines of Age, which is more like heavier like rocking number um, and like quite a long track as well, extending to six and a half minutes. However, the song is very well structured. There's a lot of like clever like time signature changes. Like I believe like the main riff like is in, I think it's like 11, 8 or like something like ridiculous like that. But then like sort of like the chorus like is in like sort of like standard 4-4 four, four timing. And you've also got some brilliant like musicianship. I believe it is just young like on like guitar like on this and it is just like absolutely like fantastic. Like he's just like playing like a socks off like on like this track here. Um, like, and like I said, like it is like that really strong musician like which helped to like sustain this song and like prevent like it getting boring and um, also is notably just a real sort of contrast like in styles like to like the first side just a really sort of like rocking track so sort of, like contrast like sort of like the more sort of like softer like acoustic nature like off like the first side so yeah a song which I really love and I think closes the album very very well Okay, so overall, this album would score 89%, which is a absolutely fantastic score. I would say that if I'm like in the mood for this sort of stripped back, like sort of like country rock, this is probably like one like off like my go-to like places like for that. Yeah, the album still manages to have a nice variety like of sounds, like with some more like acoustic tracks, like some like rockers out towards the end, and some with sort of like orchestral like embellishments. Just a really sort of like nice like, sort of like round up like off round up like of like all like off like Neil Young's like sort of like best best like musical styles like on here and in terms like off like his career like um, most I'm not sure whether most people like tend to think of this like as like his best record like this is the only like Neil Young Neil Young album like which I have heard like I have to say so yeah like, it would be like interesting to see like what like other like people like recommends like if re recommend like if like this is like an absolute like fan favorite however like it is just like one like which like I think like I read like online so where that like it's like the Neil Young album for people like who don't really Really that like Neil Young. So yeah, some recommendations like of where to go next, like with like his discography, that like, would be great. Um, like but like as you can see like from this review, like I absolutely like love this record. So yeah, that's my review of Harvest. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye.